So the first chapter of the book is all about the storm that brings the sprite to Ace's garden and the description of the storm and then the description of his garden the next morning with lots of things that have been blown there from miles away and he, he explores the garden. Then he saw it. Floating amongst the duckweed at the edge of the fish pond was a small figure. Ace assumed that it was a toy that had been blown from somewhere else. Why wouldn't he? But as his fingers closed around it, he jumped back in horror, for what he touched was not plastic or wood, it was skin. He sat down with a bump on the wet grass, with his back to the fish pond, and tried to calm down. His heart was pounding, and he felt shaky. Thank goodness there was no one around to see him, he thought. He must have looked pretty silly. Slowly he turned back to the pond and looked over the tall iris leaves. There it was, floating face up just a few feet away. It had big eyes, huge black eyes that were all pupil. It was skinny like a stick with extraordinarily long legs that were bent back unnaturally. Its slender arms ended in delicate hands and fingers that tapered to fine points. It was hard to tell exactly how tall it was, but it couldn't have been more than six inches long. Asa crawled closer. The creature had olive brown skin with a seam of sharp looking thorns running up the outside of each limb. It had dark wispy hair on its head from which sprouted two long antennae and pointed ears. As Asa looked more closely, he could see the surface of its eyes were made up of countless facets that glittered in the light. The tiny face had a sharp chin and framed a small nose and an even smaller mouth. With heart thumping, Asa dipped his fingers into the water and underneath the creature. It was all he could do to stop freaking out as he lifted it out of the pond and deposited it onto the bank as quick as he could. It flopped onto its front on the grass and Asa saw with amazement that sprouting from its shoulder blades were four slender, transparent wings. An intricate network of veins divided each like a stained glass window. That's when the thought struck him. I've found a fairy. It's dead, but I'm almost certain that I've found a real life dead fairy. And it all suddenly made sense. This is what fairies are, not wand-waving tinkerbells, but sinewy insect men, wild creatures that must be very secretive and hardly ever spotted. This one must have been blown in the hurricane from the remote place where he lived and ended up in my fish pond.